We're now 58 days into Israel's war in Gaza, and a week-long pause in fighting has collapsed, bringing back with it more devastation and destruction. Frustration with the Israeli prime minister's leadership appears to be reaching a breaking point. A noticeable rift has emerged between the United States and Israel, marking unprecedented tension between the two longtime allies. Despite the Biden administration's claim of fully backing Israel's war against Hamas, Netanyahu has publicly flouted U.S. concerns about its conduct in the war, especially as it relates to civilian casualties. Yona Lieberman, co-founder of the Jewish American advocacy group If Not Now, criticized this dynamic on social media this week, calling for accountability in U.S.-Israel relations. Quote, look, Joe Biden, Netanyahu is spitting in your face. He doesn't take you seriously. Are you going to keep hug hugging him in public, or are you going to finally end the blank check and hold him accountable for his words and actions? Well, perhaps in response to the mounting criticism, not just from, if not now, but from prominent progressives within the Democratic Party, the Biden administration has begun signaling a shift in its approach. A senior State Department official told Reuters on Friday that Washington will begin imposing visa bans on violent Israeli settlers. Daily settler attacks against Palestinians in the West Bank, according to the United Nations, have more than doubled since October 7th. Meanwhile, during a meeting with Egypt's leader on Saturday, Vice President Kamala Harris issued the strongest statement yet on the Biden administration's stance on the need to preserve the territorial integrity of Palestinian land. The stern remarks follow reports this week that Israel intends on creating a buffer zone on the Palestinian side of Gaza, which many critics interpret as a land grab. The White House released a statement later Saturday saying, quote, the vice president reiterated that under no circumstances will the United States permit the forced relocation of Palestinians from Gaza or the West Bank, the besiegement of Gaza or the redrawing of the borders of Gaza. Joining me now is Aaron David Miller. He's a former senior advisor for Arab-Israeli negotiations at the State Department. He's a senior fellow at the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace. Uh, Aaron, good to see you again. Thank you for uh, being with me. We have been glued to you and your analysis for the last two months uh, because of how much you know about this. I just had a remarkable conversation with uh, Asaf Zamir, whom you know, uh, who was actually hoping to be on the, in the conversation with you. But I want to pick up from where we were with Zamir. Um, we have a current situation that is very bad, and we have a future situation that we hope will be less bad and, and maybe even be hopeful for the Palestinians. Where are you now on, on where you think we stand and we're going? We're in a long, dark tunnel. Um, my own sort of default position, uh, Ali, is, um, is going to get worse before it gets much worse. Um, at the same time, I understand that every breakthrough without exception Israel Egypt, Israel Jordan, Israel Palestinians, even though the asshole process did not succeed, they were all preceded by war, terror, or insurgency. The reality is that uh, in conflict, uh, the Middle East pieces are scrambled. Uh, the pain is evident. What is critically missing and what is going to be extremely difficult now is to marry that pain with the prospects of gain. And that requires an external mediator who understands that when change happens, it's usually driven by the marriage of human agency, in this case, leadership, with changing circumstances. Um, I think that this crisis will, in fact, uh, create a new reality. But I think the ingredients to put together what you and I would consider to be a conflict-ending solution, those ingredients are not are not now present. And there right. are only three. You give me these three, give me these three, give me two of these three, and I'll give you more than a reasonable chance that Israelis and Palestinians could come to a conflict-ending solution. Number one, you need leaders on each side that are masters of their political houses, not prisoners of their ideologies. We do not have them. Number two, you need a sense of ownership. Israelis and Palestinians have to care about this negotiation and own it and protect it because it's in their interest. You, you, you've you heard the, the old saw that in the history of the world, nobody ever washed a rental car. Yeah. It, people don't wash rental cars because they care only about what they own. So you need ownership. And finally, you need a third party, a mediator that's prepared to be reassuring and supply ample amounts of honey, but also at critical moments, uh, that mediator needs to needs to apply ample amounts of vinegar. Give me the first two, 
and I'll give you a fighting chance. Without those first two, you and I will be having this conversation yes. year after year. Yes. We haven't been having it for a long time, and, and we continue to. And, and I don't know where to start because I, I only have a couple minutes, so I want to talk to you. I don't know if I want to talk to you about whether leaders can emerge or, number three, whether the U.S. can be the mediator it needs to be. You've been involved in these negotiations for decades. You have said that often the U.S. was not the fairest broker. Um, but now we are hearing about a United States who said we can be Israel's strongest ally and at the same time uh, have a role that says that we want uh, fairness and equity in the way this moves forward. So let's take that second topic. Do you think the U.S. can get to the right place on this? There are many Americans uh, who think that we're not in the right place on this. I just talked to Asaf Zamir, who felt that he thought Americans are in the right place for the first time in a long time, that Americans are fully united behind uh, Israel. Where are we and where should we be? Look, let, let's be clear. You have two clocks, and they're ticking at different speeds. The Israeli operational clock, the destruction of Hamas, is ticking it, it, it very slowly. They think they'll need more. They'll need months. The American political clock, Joe Biden's clock, as you pointed out, uh, Ali, is ticking much faster. These clocks are increasingly out of sync. The real question is: Can the United States and Israel come to terms? on the key issues of minimizing civilian deaths in Gaza, creating space for humanitarian assistance or not? Are we looking at a potential crisis in the U.S.'s early relationship? I can't answer that question, but it, it just seems to me having, having Israel's back for the last 58 days, extraordinary because of who Joe Biden is and because of the savagery of October 7, that puts the administration in a very strong position to apply leverage and to talk to the Israelis about the risks to them of operating in ways that you kill one Palestinian, you end up generating three or four that will hate you forever. That's a, that's a smart strategy in terms of um, uh, avoiding civilian casualties it's, is the companion piece, frankly, to uh, fighting counterterrorism uh, counter and, and, uh, and insurgency. And then, of course, the question of the day after where the Israeli government, for political reasons, is not willing at this stage to engage. So I think tougher times are coming in the U.S.-Israeli relationship, Ali. And you've got 2024 looming, where sound policy is likely to be increasingly in conflict with what the administration may well regard as sound politics. That's a problem with respect to timing in 2024. Aaron, I suppose that means you and I will have lots more opportunities for conversations. I always welcome. It's all for the wrong reasons, almost always. But thank you for being with us, as always. Aaron I, David Miller. I, I hope so. Your, your listeners, your viewers are, are, are really fortunate to have you. You give people the time and space to have a conversation. That's not always easy, particularly these days. These are difficult, but thank you for being part of that with us, Aaron. Aaron David Miller is a former senior advisor for Arab-Israeli negotiations at the State Department.